What's up guys, I'm Pierce from uh, Snappy Data and I'm here to show you a demo we recently created. Uh, this demo runs in uh, Zeppelin, which is an interactive uh, data analytics viewer, um, very similar to an IPython notebook. Um, and it's deeply integrated with Spark, uh, which is a distributed uh, data processing framework. Um, our product, Snappy Data, is also very integrated with Spark. Uh, we like to call it a distributed in-memory synopsis store. And if that sounds a little mysterious, hopefully uh, we'll clear it up by the end of this. So um, our demo is across a set of airline data from 2009 to 2015, about 40 million records in total. And what we're going to do in this demo is show you some simple uh, analytics queries over the uh, set of exact data, so all 40 million records. And then we're going to sh show you the same queries over a set of the sample data, which is something that our product does. Um, so to start, the first thing we do is create this case class that we're going to use to uh, parse the data and uh, write this little method to uh, parse all that data into the case class. Uh, pretty standard Spark stuff. And we extend uh, the Spark context here with what we call the snappy context. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and go ahead and grab the data uh, and parse it here. And then we take the data and put it into a data frame. This is the Spark data frame. So having it in a data frame, you get all the benefits of the uh, Spark data frame. Um, and then what we do is take that data frame and use a method called stratified sample uh, to take uh, stratified samples across uh, these three columns of the data, unique carrier, year, and month. And what we want to keep is about 3% total um, of the original exact data set. And we, of course, take that and put it into memory. Um, so first, uh, we went and used, wrote some Spark SQL here to see uh, how many rows total are in the exact data set. So as you can see, about 40 million. Um, and then we did the same thing to see how many rows are in the sample data set, about 1.5 million, so much smaller memory footprint. And then, of course, here we have the estimation from the uh, sample data set on how many total rows there are. And as you can see, it's only about one row off. Um, and so the first analytics query we did is uh, which airline has the most flights each year. So we can go ahead and run that. And this one is running over the uh, entire exact data set, so all 40 million records. Um, and down here, what you'll see is uh, abbreviations of each airline. So we have Delta and Southwest. Um, and you can see running that took about 11 seconds. And uh, you know this is the, the result here. Um, and then we did the same uh, query over the sample data set. So we'll go ahead and run that. As you can see it took about one second. Um, and as you can, if you look at the pie charts, they're almost identical. Um, and one thing to note, of course, is that having this run in Zeppelin, it introduces a tiny bit of over, overhead. So you know, both queries actually run faster. Um, the next query we did was uh, which airlines arrive on schedule. So we'll go ahead and run that. And of course, that's also running across the uh, all 40 million records here. And on the bottom, you have the airline abbreviations and of course the delay. Um, so that also took about 11 seconds. You can see here, uh, Alaska seems to have the best uh, least amount of delay and you know, some of these other ones. Um, and then we're going to run the same query across the uh, sample data set. And you can see it took about two seconds, so quite a bit faster. Um, the next query is, is there a trend in arrival delay over the years? So this is across all, uh, you know, all airlines. Is there some kind of trend happening in, in arrival delay? So over the exact data set again on the left here, and again, about 11 seconds. Um, you, you see the uh, graph here, and it shows, looks like in 2012, the arrival delay dipped down, which is nice. Uh, same query over the uh, sample data, and takes about two seconds. And of course, looking at the two graphs, they look just about identical. Now with this query, we added uh, the error estimate in. So if we click here and look at the actual results, we can see we have an error estimate uh, of the sample. So what this means is that for this value that it came back with, 
it's plus or minus 0.29% uh, percent confidence. Or actually, this is an, an 80% confident. So we're 89, or we're 80% confident that this number is within uh, 0.29 of the actual number. And that's, you know, you can see the error estimate for each number here. So uh, kind of a cool way to see how close or to get a sense of your confidence in the answer. Uh, and so in the next example here, we have a user-defined function uh, that we created. And what we're, go we're going to use it to determine uh, what's the best time of day to travel. So we're going to run that over the exact data. Um, again, this is going over all 40 million records. And once again, takes about 11 seconds. Uh, going to use the same uh, query here on the sample data. And it's about two seconds again. So and, and if you look at the two graphs, they're pretty much identical. Um, and as you can see, this kind of goes on and uh, kind of follows the same pattern. But the point is, is that using uh, Snappy Data's uh, synopses, you can get answers to analytics class queries much faster that are very similar to queries over the exact uh, data set. And uh, to learn more about this, you should check out our site, uh, www.snappydata.io. Um, and then we also have a blog there uh, that goes into a little more technical detail about how our product works and what you know, synopses tables are. So thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it.